Hello, hello. Welcome to... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was doing that because one of my friends wanted me to do a British accent. I don't know why. Heyo, I'm Ori, and welcome back to another video. So, a lot has happened. For starters, I never expected much traction on this channel, let alone any of my videos hitting 9,000 views. I've been laughing with my family because my most popular video is a topic I'm the least experienced in. Go figures, right? But quite honestly, I couldn't be more thankful that the video saw many new eyes. It allowed more critique and feedback to come my way, and all of this was extremely helpful. I know I'm not nearly as big as most creators, but I still feel like since this video was getting traction, I should be more responsible on how I discuss certain topics and show people I've applied some of the feedback into a new song I made. So come on along while I take you on a journey on how I made this new song and my process for making music. Something I really wish I spent more time on in my previous video was explaining exactly how I start from nothing. I know for many people, the idea of coming up with a melody from thin air can seem impossible, but I say that the most important thing when learning something new is to simply have fun. Take breaks, and don't stress yourself out because ideas aren't coming to you. I know YouTube tends to show the perfect final product of everything, but these things take professionals hours, and overcoming that people are making beautiful masterpieces in seconds mentality has really helped me. To make people feel better, I'll show the complete process at the very end with my mistakes and how the song ends up as a final product. I want to do this because I want to show that sometimes the final product can end up wildly different than what you started with. One attempt was so different that I got distracted and made it its own song, but before we get into that, I want to go over the music theory topic again. If you just want to get to the meat of the process, you can click the time step in the chapter section and just skip right ahead. Well, quite honestly, that's up to you. How passionate are you about making new music, and do you think that you can stick with something new? If the answer is yes, then I say you should go for it. In my last video, I stated that music theory isn't really necessary for making music, and honestly, I still believe that's true. Music theory will definitely make the process a lot smoother, and you'll have a much better understanding of your music, but you can also just figure it out through good old trial and error. I said this before, but have fun with it. Quite frankly, trying to learn music theory makes me want to rip my eyes out. It gets super boring, and I'm really not interested in the technical side of music, because for me, and just how I've grown up, music has always been something I just felt. I know some professionals are probably like, well, that's quite a lot of words for saying that you're lazy as hell, but it just works. And what works for me may not work for you. So try new things and find out what works best for you. With that being said, let's get into the breakdown and the process on how I made all the different kinds of songs. In my previous video, I hopped straight into the DAW and began showing myself making the song, but more than often the final song takes me about one or two tries to get right. Although sometimes I'm absolutely crap, I still follow my basic process for making music, and I still attempted to identify a theme for each song. For some reason my brain was on battle music, akin to Final Fantasy or later SNES like RPGs, so I began to mess around with that idea in my head. Now, there were a couple things I learned from the comments in my first video, and this really helped me improve the process in developing music. So here's a small list of things I attempted to improve upon on making this song. When using the NES VST, avoid using chords. I noticed that using chords with this VST can cause tracks to sound extremely busy. Use more dynamic melodies. While I do like the old track I made, some of the sounds are very basic and get boring really fast. So in this new track, I tried to make certain parts of the song more complex. And three, Spend more time leveling and mixing the audio to prevent every instrument being played at the same volume. A major critique I got with the last track was that everything was noisy and you couldn't really hear individual instruments. So I tried to spend a little bit more time cleaning things up. With this in mind, I felt as if I was in a much better position to make something far more interesting. So I got straight to work. So during the first attempt, I still wanted to make something groovy so I attempted to make something with a more bossa nova like melody. I don't want to go too in depth with each of the failed attempts on this video or the video would end up being far too long. But to start, I created this back and forth progression that gave me the kind of vibe I was looking for. Now, while I love this to start, the song was giving more of a hotel vibe, which wasn't bad. I felt as if a battle hotel could be an interesting song concept, but after listening to it over and over again, it just wasn't sitting with me. I didn't try this other chord progression, but the melody was so cheery that I wasn't really able to figure out what to add to it. Mm -hmm. 
By this point, I had a feeling that the song was probably going to be a miss, so I decided to just switch gears and fully sing the cheery aspect. I added this cute melody on top of the chords to give it a goofy vibe. I then worked on the bass line and changed up the instrument. I added this, uh, I'm not really sure what this instrument's called, this thing, and worked on some simple progression. And with all that done, I ended up with this. Not really a battle song in the slightest, but hey, it's something I can use for another project in the future, so overall, it wasn't a complete loss. Also, the counter melody in this song helped me come up with a more complex progression during the final song. So with that, let's move on to the second attempt. Okay, so the second attempt was much shorter than the first one, but that's because I did these back to back, and realistically, I should have given myself a break. I only recorded the rough piano section to this song, but what I had sounded more in line with what I was trying to do. I didn't get much farther past the little loop, so the final product isn't something too crazy, and the melody is different, but here it is in case you're curious. There's parts of this short loop that I really like, so maybe I'll do something with it in the future, but feel free to use this loop for anything you'd like to make. Maybe you'll make something cool out of it. After working on two songs back to back, I decided it'd be smart to take a break and pick up the process tomorrow. And with a fresh start, I was ready to create something amazing. With both of the previous songs, I felt that they were a little too stiff. So I really tried to make something more groovy and playful. And after about an hour, yes, an hour, I came up with this. Now, I won't lie, I was super excited to create this song after I made this little melody because I thought the piano by itself was just so fun and dynamic. So with the chord progression done and the bass notes placed, I decided to work on the melody. I forgot to mention this, but if you ever have trouble making bass lines with progressions, I suggest taking the root note, which is the lowest part of your chord, and separating it from your chord. You'll notice that you can make a bass line with this note that still follows the melody, and what I usually do to spice it up is place notes that fall on the chord line, but at lower octaves. That way, everything still sounds nice. If that was difficult to understand, I'll be sure to link a video in the description that'll explain it much better than me. But back to the breakdown. When working with groovy chords, I love keeping the melody simple so as not to distract from the whole song. I learned that with my last song that I probably should have saved the more complicated melody for the bass line, as it would have led the song better. That being said, having a complex melody isn't a bad thing, and it really comes down to what the song you're making asks for. After some time, I came up with this simple melody that goes along with the chords. After this was done, I came up with this drum loop to help carry the chords. This first section of the drums are far too aggressive and fast, but I do fix this later on. With that done for now, it was time to get the instruments in place. Earlier I mentioned that using the chords with the NES VSD can get pretty messy, so to keep things simple, I took the top notes, which I personally call the melody notes, and used that to make the NES chords. This will sound pretty empty right now, but when everything is together, it allows you to hear the individual instruments more clearly. Here's how this sounds by itself with some reverb and delay. I did the same thing with the bass line, and I thought that sounded insanely good by itself.
Now, it was time to convert the melody into the NES VST. The melody by itself was very nice, but to prevent the track from sounding too hollow, I took the melody and panned it to one side. I then took the same melody and moved it a few chords down and panned it to the opposite side. Now, what this does is not only make the song sound less empty, but it also makes the melody have this nice harmonic effect that really tickles the right part of your brain. With all this done, here's what we have so far. This sounds pretty good so far, but there's obviously more work to be done. The bass is extremely drowned out, so you never really get a chance to hear it, and the drums are extremely insane. But for now, I wanted to work a little bit on the intro melody for the song. The previous song's intro was very basic, so I wanted to try and make something more complicated, like a piano run. After some time, here's what I ended up settling on. And with the intro of the song done, it was time to move on to the B section. Now, this part of the battle music is when things tend to pick up, so I really needed to create a progression that flowed nicely into each other, but up the intensity of the fight. I decided to keep the progression pretty similar, but increase the frequency of the chords that were played. After some time, here's what I came up with. Where I really wanted to push the speed of the song was the bass line, so I made another running bass line that went with the melody, and ended up with this. There were some parts I forgot to record, specifically melodies for two sections, so I'll explain how I came up with those. Usually I take the top note of a chord and mess around with the other parts of the piano until I hear something that matches the tone of the song. In the B section, I kept the melody extremely simple and spaced this out because I wanted the chords in the bass line to carry this part. It's also important to change the drums so they match the tone of each section, so I cleaned up the drums. Something I really enjoyed with the last song was the choir. I wanted to use it again, but I wanted to keep it more subtle, so I added this slow rising choir that leads into the mid section. But all this together, here's how the B section sounds. So now we have a solid intro and B section. With this, we can move on to the mid section. So something I wanted to do with this part was kind of make a slower, more emotional vibe to the song. I decided to do a more Twilight Princess inspired feeling to carry the midsection. This part ended up being my favorite part of the song because frankly, it was just so beautiful. With those chords done, I made this simple melody that goes with the chords and during the second run of the song, I decided to break up the chords to prepare for the final section. Here's how everything sounds together. Just like the midsection, I took the melody and attached it to a single NES lead. I then took the chords and spaced them out to create this back and forth pattern that matched the song. I wanted the bass line to carry this part of the song, so I broke up some of the notes and gave it a bit more flavor. And of course, the drums for this section needed to be slowed down to match the vibe, so enjoy these nice chill drums. To continue the choir that was heard in the B section, I decided to take the chords and then space them out. Then I shortened them to add to this swell.
Now, with that done, here's how the midsection sounds all together. Overall, I think we have an extremely solid midsection, so with that, we can move on to the outro of the song. With the outro section of songs, especially when it comes to battle music, you want to make sure the melody and the tone leads back into the intro in a somewhat seamless process. So to start, I took a chord progression very similar to the B section, but extended it and added a brighter outro. I then made another bass line run to go with it. It's a bit hard to hear in the piano roll, but I'll play it anyway so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. I then began to work on an outro melody that led into the intro piano run. Again, it's kind of hard to hear, but I'll play it anyway just to show the process. To loop it back into itself, I decided to cut the intro piano run in half and use it at the very end. And that was about it. I went back and added some transitional parts into the song, like plucks and fast bass lines, so I'll play it individually. But with that out of the way, here's the full song. for this video. This one was much longer than normal, so if you made it to the end, you earned a cookie. I really wanted to make sure this video went into more depth than before, so I hope I was able to deliver on that promise I made last video. In the future, I hope to make some music on stream or even try making music with samples. As a side note, if you want to use these melodies or music, you're more than welcome to. I'm always in support of young artists decompiling work to learn from it, so if copying the melody helps you understand it a bit more, be my guest. And thank you for watching. I want to give a huge shout out to Vanessa, Hannibal, Kalik, and Jasmine for supporting me and the channel. Your continued support helps me create more videos for everyone to enjoy. And thank you to all the people that provided feedback on my last music related video. I learned so much thanks to you and I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe as it helps the channel immensely. With that, thank you and I'll see you next time.